as we celebrate the 15th anniversary of CentOS, which is uh, in four days, as it turns out, as I record this, uh, the project was wow. founded on April 15th, 15 years ago. And uh, I've been talking with a number of people who've been involved with the project, some of them from the very beginning, some of whom have joined later on. And today I'm speaking with Jeff Sheltron. First of all, uh, what, what do you do these days? Uh, what, what company are you with now? Yeah, I'm a, a partner at a consulting firm called Tag One Consulting. And we kind of specialize in scaling uh, large websites uh, for the most part, but we handle all the infrastructure around that. Uh, we also uh, do a lot of like performance optimizations for things like uh, MySQL and Postgres databases, MongoDB, uh, things like that. Uh, help companies kind of with their overall infrastructure and development plans and pipelines. Um, a lot of automation and monitoring and best practices and, and kind of general technical and architecture leadership. Uh, is what we do, and um, we definitely rely very heavily on CentOS. And how long have you yourself been a CentOS user or involved in the community? That's a good question. I, I believe I got involved right around the, the creation of the CentOS project. Um, at the time, I was at uh, UC Santa Barbara, and I was working within the College of Engineering, and we had a huge legacy infrastructure of Solaris, uh, both servers and workstations for a number of uh, like research groups and things like that. Um, so at the time we were looking at a couple things, um, getting getting the workstations generally moved over to a current Red Hat version, which at the time was maybe Red Hat 7-ish. Uh, yeah, okay. not, Red Hat Linux, not Red Hat Enterprise 7, but Red Hat. Uh, seven, yeah. uh, before it became Fedora, uh, then with the release of CentOS, uh, starting to look at migrating all of the server infrastructure over to CentOS from Solaris. Um, so that was kind of my deep dive into uh, into Linux, and actually, uh, you know, was really intrigued by Yum at the time. It was actually not even included with the OS at that time. Uh, but you could install it on top, and Seth was doing some amazing stuff. I think I actually wrote one of the first scripts for uh, writing out, like, the group repo data, which was kind of new at the time, so you could define your own custom yum groups and, and spit out that repo data into your repo and do kind of yum group install, whatever. Since we had so many uh, so many legacy systems that kind of couldn't be upgraded uh, at the time. We, uh, I also got involved with what uh, the project Jesse Keating started, uh, which was Fedora Legacy. Uh, so, and that, the goal of that was kind of provide some long-term support to the existing popular Red Hat versions. I think we did like maybe 7.3 and 8 and 9. And those were the releases leading up to Fedora 1. Uh, so I think when Fedora got released and Red Hat kind of was dropping support for those, we kind of picked it up as a community. And that was kind of a very similar thing to what I saw happening around CentOS. Uh, just kind of, you know, we want a community stable, long-term supported release. Um, so that's definitely what drew me into the project. Um, kind of with just a solid LTS system that we didn't have to pay an arm and a leg for. In addition to the very important role of, of being kind of a power user and providing that sort of feedback, what's your involvement in the community these days? I guess I'll, I'll start and say I, I think I initially kind of got involved with um, a lot of support on both IRC and on the email list. You know, I was there all the time asking questions, so it just made sense for me to be answering questions too. That's what kind of, uh, I think uh, got me introduced to Johnny and Karen Beer and those uh, early on in the in the process, um, and I believe I got invited to uh, join the the QA team back, maybe with the CentOS five release really, somewhere in the five series. I want to say it, my memory gets blurry that back that far, and then uh, got 
was kind of just doing some general testing, uh, pre-release or kind of pre-update for any packages. Uh, and then around the CentOS 7 release cycle, um, got more involved with kind of the, the project planning around what all we had to get done for the 7.0 release. Um, and a lot of kind of, uh, public communications about the progress. It was definitely a longer release cycle. Uh, than normal. There were a lot of changes to all the build processes then due to all the big changes for Red Hat Enterprise 7. Uh, and it was just the kind of thing where you have to iterate and, you know, let things build for a half a day. And then you say, oh, crap, something broke. Let's fix that and do it again. And, you know, that was a cycle for weeks, probably. I, I was re pretty Im heavily involved with the QA process at that point. Uh, I've since dropped off a little bit and I'm a little bit idle with the project right now, but uh, definitely have plans to continue helping with the QA process. Um, and actually, I'm really interested in uh, potentially helping Fabian uh, with some of the infrastructure maintenance. I know he's doing a ton of work pretty much single handedly and uh, doing an awesome job using Ansible and some cool technologies. Uh, so that's uh, maybe my next focus when I can get a little free time here. Have you looked at RHEL 8? at all not a lot i've i did a quick beta install and poked around um haven't looked much at the details uh generally i'm always super happy for a new major release uh, mm -hmm. you know that means dropping a ton of legacy stuff uh for example we're you know we run mostly centos 7 uh, on on many servers and workstations and recently hit an issue that the Git version in CentOS 7 is old enough that it doesn't follow certain redirects properly, um, which is a strange, unique issue. But we were just uh, working with the Drupal Association and we helped migrate them, their old Git infrastructure over to GitLab, uh, which mm -hmm. just announced this week. Uh, and, you know, one of the random kind of things that were was in place previously uh, we need to put in a bunch of redirects for that, and suddenly the Git on CentOS 7 didn't work without some extra config. Uh, so it's, you know, things like that that make me appreciate a new release, uh, drop all the super old versions and get on to modern for now versions. That said, I I absolutely love CentOS 7 and the long-term support. It's It's just so stable and been good for us. Are you still running anything that's that's earlier than that from the five and six days? Uh, you know, I jump around between a lot of different clients. Uh, definitely uh, internal ourselves, we don't have anything that old. Uh, I do have some clients running some six. Uh, and um, yes, you get reminded of how old that is occasionally <laughs> when you log in and look at versions of things. It's amazing, uh, you know, and it's great that uh, you know, that Red Hat continues to provide all those patches and, and keep those systems stable. You know, you know, I, I love that we can last that long and, and still be secure uh, and, you know, give people a, a chance to get an upgrade plan if they need to. But yeah, luckily, uh, nothing too old for me. I've been a just a long time CentOS user. Um, I think it's a great project. I've really uh, appreciate all the the vast community that contributes in in various ways. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a ton of people helping. Uh, you know, with answer questions on the forums, help people with their bug reports and things like that. And and it's just an amazing effort from uh, from community members that that aren't you know financially tied to the project, uh, but just want to see it succeed. Uh, and I I really love that about the project. Well, we certainly appreciate your help. It's uh... Kind of hard to imagine Thank that you. it's been 15 years already, but uh, yeah. no kidding. <laughs> no wonder my memory is kind of hazy about back then. It's been a long time. Well, thank you, Jeff. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for uh, taking time out of your your conference schedule. Thank you, and uh, Rich, I appreciate you uh, doing these interviews and the the newsletter and everything you're working on. I think that's all great. It's cool to see uh, some kind of more more uh, community sharing of, of information and, and publicizing some of this stuff. I think it's really cool. Bye. All right, bye.